about whether or not there could be life on other planets. Ancient scriptures have been found which depict unidentified flying objects coming from the stars containing unknown life forms. Could these just be stories, or is there a reason why these observations are included amongst the historical facts? I certainly think there's a possibility there could be aliens in the universe, you can't discount it, but um, I don't think there's any way we could possibly say what they're likely to look like. Yep, definitely, definitely think there's aliens, um, because I think there's far too much space if there isn't any more living things than us, and I think that um, they, at the moment, they haven't grown yet. I think they're really small, really blobby and um, a bit creepy, kind of just like crawling around. I don't think actually there would be aliens, but if they were, I, according to the movies I've seen, they would look something like white skin and a weird body and, and uh, maybe really big eyes and, and, and stuff. <laughs> I think there are aliens in the universe, but they're not going to be like little green gremlins. I think they're going to be like... Um, many little insect things. Maybe no, no eyebrows and stuff like that. This is what I've seen on the movies and stuff. Yeah, I do think there are, but um, I don't know. Probably not green. Like that. <laughs> I don't think there would be aliens in the universe, and I think they would be all green and weird. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't really given it that much thought. Um, I kind of just see aliens in my head as like big green and like blobby and floating maybe. I don't know about the colour or the shape or anything, but yeah, I do, I do think they exist, yeah. I think there could be. I think there's a really good chance there is. Um, but we have no information. How could we? We know that we live on a rock, the third rock from the sun, and we know it's got life on it. We don't know that about any other object in the universe. So what is needed for life? Water is essential for life. About 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water and all organisms need it to survive. So why does the Earth have liquid water? Well, the Earth is in the perfect position relating to the Sun. If the Earth was any closer to the Sun, the water would evaporate. If the Earth was any further away from the Sun, the water would freeze. This means that the Earth is in the Goldilocks zone as it's not too hot and not too cold. It's thought that about 3% of the planets in the Milky Way could be in this Goldilocks zone and have liquid water. Volcanoes are important for life as they have shaped the Earth's dynamic surface. When a volcano erupts, it brings chemicals from deep inside the Earth to the surface, changing the environmental conditions. Volcanoes may have even sparked the first beginnings of life on Earth. It's thought that a volcanic eruption combined with a lightning strike might have created the first amino acids. So why do we have volcanoes on Earth? Well, volcanoes erupt due to radiation from the core. Any large enough rock planet will have a volcanic surface for this reason. Oxygen is essential for life as we know it. We need it for respiration to provide us with energy. Oxygen is also produced by photosynthesizing organisms such as plants. So the presence of oxygen on a planet suggests that there could be the potential for life. So could anywhere else accommodate life? Well, any planet that's the perfect distance from a star could have liquid water. Any big enough rock planet could have a volcanic surface due to radiation from the core. And there's also several planets and moons in our solar system alone which have enough oxygen to accommodate life. I don't think there's any one that we've found that's really, really good. But one of the exciting things about this recent study by Kassan and his colleagues is that it looks like about 3% of that incredible number of planets just in our own galaxy that they contain water, liquid water on the surface, and at least for our kind of life, liquid water is almost essential. For all our organisms it is. So perhaps there are lots of places that could hold this kind of life. My concern is that life elsewhere might be so different, we can't even actually go, hello, you're an organism. The Drake Equation was developed by Dr. Frank Drake in 1961. 
It's a way of calculating the number of intelligent civilizations that might exist in the Milky Way. It might look like just a load of letters, but in fact it takes into account many factors like the number of planets suitable for life and the number of civilizations that develop detectable technology. Drake himself estimated that there might be about 10,000 of these civilizations in the Milky Way. However, this creates a paradox. If there's so many of them, why have they never contacted us? So could there be aliens? Well, we now know that there's a high probability that we're not alone in the universe. However, aliens could be so different to us that if we saw one, would we even recognise it as alive? One thing I can be sure about, they won't look like the latest science fiction film about aliens. And that's a really notable thing about reports of aliens by members of the public. You know, I've been abducted by aliens. They nearly always resemble the last film creation that was meant to be relevant. So they'll be different to us. I don't expect they're all going to be about two metres tall, walking on two legs, talking a language. And I wonder even if they're made of cells. I wonder even if they're actually made of carbon compounds. We are that ignorant. It could be something completely different to us. Perhaps we wouldn't even recognise it if it turned up in front of us. If you've got any scientific questions you want us to try and answer, find us on Facebook or get in touch on Twitter.